Story time of how I found out that my mom was putting our dad's ashes in our food. Yep, our mom would put our dead dad's ashes in our dinner. So basically, after my dad died, my mom showed zero emotion. It's like she really didn't care at all. Like she kind of wanted it to happen. His death was like an unsolved case. And nobody knows how he actually died. And now that I get to think about it, it might have been my mom, but I don't want to jump to conclusions. And if it was her and she sees this video, I don't want to end up like him. Anyways, back to the story. So about a month after he died, she would always post a picture of me and my brother's dinner with the caption, you'll always be with them. Literally every single night. And honestly, nobody really caught on. All the comments were like, we're praying, we're praying, this and that. Until one day I was just sitting on the couch and I look over and my mom was pouring something into the mashed potatoes. So I go a little closer and I see her pouring the ashes of my dad into our mashed potatoes. Listen, this story only gets 10 times worse, so like for a part two. Part two of how my mom was putting my dad's ashes in me and my brother's dinner. Continue on with the story, after I see her literally pouring my dad's ashes into our mashed potatoes, and I mean, this lady literally sees me staring at her pouring the ashes into our mashed potatoes, and she, like, doesn't even say anything. I was just, uh, you know, a little shocked. So after that, I just kept quiet until after dinner, and I was mad at my brother that night, so I just let him eat the ash mashed potatoes. So after dinner, I went up to my mom and asked her why she was putting our dad's ashes in our food. And her exact words were, your father was a bad man. He wasn't meant to be here. I said, what does that have to do with you putting his ashes in our dinner? She goes, it will just cleanse your soul. The witches told me to feed my children's father to them. Bishwe? I ended up telling my brother, but then me and him decided not to ever say anything ever again. Because we don't want her little spirits telling them to do the same thing with us, so... Something fun. When you're in a long-term relationship, you'll often find yourself doing this thing with your partner where you'll say, when we have kids, I hope they have this trait of yours. And today my husband was like, I hope our kids will be as resilient and determined as you. When I was 11 years old, I got in a fight with my mum when she was picking me up from school and I was being so rude that she wanted to teach me a lesson and scare me a little bit. So she said, you can find your own way home. Left me outside of my classroom, got in her car and drove off. Now, realistically, she was just doing the block and was going to come back and pick me up, hoping that I would be apologetic. Uh, but I wasn't. I was very stubborn and was like, I can find my own way home. And I decided to run home. I, in fact, sprinted from the school grounds and ran into a close family friend who offered to give me a lift, which I accepted and I got home by my own means. Now, my mum did do the block and not only came back to me not being where she left me, but to one of my friends saying, yeah, I saw her get in the car with some weird guy. Imagining my mum's soul leaving her body that day is enough for me to not ever want kids, let alone kids like me. My daughter Savannah is the CEO of faking illness to get out of school. So when she does not feel like being there, she will go to the nurse's office and complain to them that she is really not feeling good so that they call me and I have to go get her. Well, one day after this happens, I walk into the administrative office and everybody is really concerned because Savannah is sitting in a chair like so dramatically like... Hi, mom. And like, when I saw her, I, I burst out laughing. I was like, oh my God, are you okay? And everybody looked at me like I was some really bad mom. Like, oh my God, why aren't you more concerned? But as we were walking out, she was walking really slow and actually didn't look good. So even I was a little concerned. I was like, oh my God, honey, are you okay? Until we got to the car when Savannah looks at me and goes, you know what, mom? I feel better now. And I was like, Savannah, are you serious? And she's like, mom, do you maybe want to go to Starbucks and have like a girl's day? And I was like, honey. What kind of question is that? You know I do. <laughs> I had been hiding in my closet for eight hours watching me sleep and change. This claim this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. Ran into my living room and I asked him what he was doing. He said that he really liked me and that he just wanted to spend some time with me and he didn't know how to tell me. So he decided to come over to my place when I went to the supermarket the night before. I asked him how he got in and he said he came in through a window. I looked at my window and it was wide open. Remember I said I went to the supermarket in part one? That's when he decided to come into my apartment. By the way, at this point, I had just finished showering and I was in my towel. My knees started shaking and I was so scared. I asked him why he hid in my closet for eight hours. He said it wasn't a big deal and that he thought I wouldn't see him. Then he actually said that he was excited for our second date. He started walking toward me and I told him to stay away. But then he started getting really angry. So I decided to play it off and act like everything was cool just so that I could get out of my apartment safely. I stayed with him in my apartment for two hours. Then I pretended I wanted to go get breakfast together. But then he lunged at me and tried to kiss me part three as- 
Story time about how my blind date hid in my closet for eight hours. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. So I'm in my late 20s and I've been looking for a boyfriend for years now. I started using dating apps, but none of that worked. Recently, my boyfriend started dating this really cool guy. He told me he had a really good friend and that he thought they should set me up. Of course, I had never met this guy before. I didn't know if he had social media. I didn't know anything about him. My sister and her boyfriend set up the whole thing. Oh yeah, and my sister told me that he was a doctor, he owned a boat, and loved golfing. So I got ready for the date and I showed up to the restaurant. Right away he comes over and says hi to me. He knew that I would be wearing a pink shirt. We sat down to eat and we basically stood at the restaurant for three hours just talking and having fun. We talked about a bunch of stuff and towards the end of the date he gave me a kiss and asked me out again. I said yes. We said goodbye and I went home. Then I decided to go get ice cream and I went back home. I watched some TV, went to sleep. The next morning I'm getting ready, I open my closet door and he jumps out. Part two is up. He lunges at me and tries to kiss me. I pushed him away but then he tried again. I ran to the door, unlocked it and ran to my neighbor's house. I could feel him right behind me the whole time. He was asking me to calm down down while I was running away. Did he actually think I was going to be flattered that he was hiding in my closet for eight hours while I slept? Luckily, my neighbor opened the door right away. He let me in, but my blind date tried to pretend that we were together and that we had just gotten into a fight. My neighbor knew better because he knew my situation. He locked the door and then we called the cops. It turns out he went to the same gym I did. My sister's boyfriend goes to the same gym. So he asked my sister's boyfriend to set us up, even though they actually didn't know each other. The cops looked for him but couldn't find him. I haven't seen him since. If you're ever driving late at night, don't do what they did. Two boys picked up a girl on the side of the road while they were on their way to a school dance. In the car, she kept saying that she was cold, so one of the boys gave her his jacket. But when the night ended and they were about to drop her off, the girl accidentally left with the jacket. So the boys said that they would just come back the next day to get it. But when they came back and knocked on her door, they discovered something that would make them question what is real and what isn't. An old woman opened the door and asked them who they were looking for. After talking to her for a while, it was revealed that the girl they found on the side of the road was her daughter. But the thing is, she had been dead for 12 years. She was killed in a car accident at the same street corner they first saw her. The old woman pointed to a cemetery down the road and said, that's where we buried her. The boys didn't believe her at first. They'd spent the whole night with this girl, so they knew that she had to be real. But they went to the cemetery and saw the boy's jacket draped over a gravestone. And on the gravestone was the girl's name and the date of her death, exactly 12 years ago to the day. Crazy ass story time. 23 years ago, there was this mother of two children who just recently had a third child. Soon after, the newborn baby was sleeping in the nursery while they were throwing a house party. And unfortunately, during the party, the house caught on fire. Everyone scrambles out of the house and they couldn't get to the baby. And then the cops concluded that the baby had died in the fire. But her other two kids made it out alive. And even though the cops told her that her baby had died, she refused to believe it. Many years later, the mother took her two children to a birthday party. And there was this other woman there with her child. And now the mother looks at that child and is in shock because she looks so much like her other two kids. So she goes up to the little girl and says that she has bubble gum in her hair so that she can steal a few strands of her hair. She took it to a lab and they DNA tested it and that little girl was her child. So it turns out many years ago during that house party, a woman that the mother knew went upstairs, took the baby and started the fire so that the baby would be declared as dead and she could easily get away with kidnapping her. Um, and then she ran from the cops and they can't find her. I'm going to be telling you the scary story of the house I lived in in elementary and middle school. It was a three bedroom house, one bedroom in the basement and two bedrooms upstairs. Because I was the oldest, I got put in the bedroom in the basement. Right when we moved in, I already had creepy feelings about the house. I hated being downstairs by myself. One day I dropped a $20 bill behind my dresser. I decided to move my dresser all by myself and behind the dresser was this door. It wasn't a normal door, it was really short and just squared. It was also glued off so I couldn't get into it. Me and my neighbor who were best friends worked at it for days to get into it. We finally got it open and inside was another room. It was almost like an underground attic. The walls were wooden, the ceiling was wooden, there was no carpet but it smelt awful. My parents found out and they were super mad at me for opening the room. They of course put that dresser in front of that door for a reason because they knew I would explore it. But after that, things started to get weird. Stay tuned for part two. This is part two of my scary childhood story about the door behind my dresser. Of course, my parents were really mad at us for opening it up, so they sealed it back up. They just didn't want us to get hurt from all the rusty nails or if there was mold inside. But I think we released something when we opened that door and a lot of things started to happen. First, I started having night terrors to the point where I would scream at the top of my lungs and not wake up. My parents would have to come downstairs and wake me up and put me back to bed. Then, every single night I would have this reoccurring dream that me, my mom, and my brother were all at a picnic at the beach. 
This super old lady would walk up to us and she would take me. She then would lock me up in the room behind my dresser. This dream would reoccur every single night for months. It scared me so much that I started to not sleep at night. I developed insomnia and would only sleep for two to three hours per night at only eight years old. There was a couple nights where I swear I saw the old lady standing in the corner of my room. My parents just thought I was hallucinating from no sleep though. Stay tuned for part three. This is part three of my scary childhood story about the door behind my dresser. Because I wasn't sleeping and developed insomnia, my parents took me to a sleep therapist. The only thing the therapist gave me was a bunch of sleeping pills. Even though the sleeping pills worked, it made my dreams so much worse. I even started walking in my sleep. I would wake up all the time not in my bed. My covers would be all the way across the room like someone had dragged them over there. One night, one of my best friends slept over and we heard knocking coming from the door behind my dresser. That night when we went to bed, she started speaking really creepy gibberish in her sleep. I had to go get my mom to wake her up. I woke up a couple nights feeling like I was suffocating and when I swung out of bed, I saw a silhouette of an old lady. My cat even started to sit there and meow and hiss at random things in the corners of the room. But there was nothing ever there. It got so bad to the point where I moved up into my brother's room. If any of you have listened to all three parts and are experts on spirits, please message me on Instagram and tell me what you think I released that night when I opened the door. Yeah. It's not real. I don't even want to go back home.